Okay, so if you've uh, seen my intro for the um, game theory, um, we haven't really got stuck into exam questions yet. We really were leading into that, and one thing we looked at was the stable solution theorem. And we briefly spoke about mixed strategies. Um, if there's a stable solution, then a, a mixed strategy is not necessary. Now, this first question here is the matrix is obviously has no stable solution because of the question. The way we don't have to show that it has no stable solution here, but I'm going to do that anyway just to get into the idea. Um, the stable solution uh, theorem says a stable solution exists if, and this is important, uh, and only if, very important mathematical idea, it's, ne um, it's necessary and sufficient condition that the row maximin Let's write this properly. Rho maximin is equal to column minimax. It's often a part of a question. It isn't here, but I'm going to do it anyway. So what I'm about to do uh, wouldn't be necessary in the question. But I'm going to show that this payoff matrix here doesn't require a... Um, so it doesn't have a stable solution, has no state, uh, settle point, because if it did, we would have a necessary condition is that the row maxi min is equal to the column mini max. It's also sufficient, as we say. So let's have a look. We go for this idea of play safe strategies. So if L is playing safe here, the worst that they would do um, the, the worst outcome if they play row 1 is minus 4. The worst if they play row 2 is minus 2. And the worst if they play row 3 is minus 3. So the row maximin is equal to minus 2. Now let's look at S. If S plays 1, the worst they're going to do is 3. Remember, the worst is the highest number in this case, because that means S loses 3. The worst that happens if S plays 2 is that they don't lose anything at all, because um, minus 1 is better. That means that S would actually win 1 if L plays 2, and if L plays 1, it'd also win 1. But if L plays 3, they don't win an infinite neutral. And S, um, S plays 3, the worst that can happen here is, the worst possible outcome here is the highest number, again, which is 2. Okay, so the column minimax, these are the maximums of these, the minimax, is equal to zero. Now we can say row maximin is not equal to column, or we can just say zero, not equal to minus two. Row maximin not equal to column minimax, which means that there is no stable solution, no settle point. This, I must stress, would be a waste of time to write in the exam. We're not asked to show it. When we go into June 14 in a moment, we'll see that it says that it does actually ask us to do that, to verify that there's no stable solution in this game. Okay, but that's the main idea. Now that basically means that there's no stable solution, so they're going to, there's going to be a mixed strategy for them. So they're going to, 
change, um, change, you know, play Al Anas is going to change what they do uh, in proportion. So they'll sometimes they'll play certain uh, rows and columns. And what we're now to, uh, intending to do is decide which um, which plays where, uh, which um, which proportions that L would play. Now, first of all, we're looking at Laura, the game from Laura's point of view, so we're not transposing the matrix or anything. Everything's from Laura's point of view, so it's quite straightforward in that sense. Okay. Um, what isn't? Uh, what we do need to look at here is the fact that we've got a three by three matrix now. Without linear programming, and when this is not likely to be a simplex method uh, question, there must be some form of domin domination going on. In other words, for one of these strategies has to be kind of redundant, if you like, in that one of them is never a good idea because it's dominated by another. Okay, so if we look at this, Look at row one here. Row one, we uh, is one is actually worse than row two. Yeah, so it's lower than that. Row three, should I say? Row um, this number here minus one is also worse than this one. And this number minus four is also worse, lower than minus three. So basically, for a row one is dominated by row three. Because basically, it needs to be like this for every row, or for every entry. So we've got 2 is greater than 1, 0 is greater than minus 1, and minus 3 is greater than minus 4. It has to be that for every single actually entry in the row. If that ever happens, then you've got a case of domination. It's never a good idea for Laura to play 1, because in every case, no matter what S does, it would be better for Laura to play row 3. Okay, so we have this row is effectively then be so we uh, is redundant. So we can say that it's being dominated by that and by row three, and they would never play row one. Okay, so now now it becomes a two by three matrix. We can actually use our standard kind of rugby post method, we sometimes call it, and we're basically deciding whether what proportion L should play row, uh, row 2, as I said, we, given the fact that we know they never play row 1 because it's dominated, and what they should play row 3. And um, we'll call this 1 minus P, but it is important that we actually define this problem properly. Let's go back to let's change colour here. So, so let, well, let's just say let Laura play row one, row two, so they say with probability P and row three, because they must add up to one, they're going to do one or the other with probability. one minus p okay so that's setting it up uh, it's quite important we write that down this isn't uh, this isn't just me being pedantic or whatever we should write and set it up properly okay now um in, so it will make a difference obviously what sam does so if i if sam plays row two, uh, column one, it 
Mm. I'm struggling to write at the moment. So if, if Sam plays column one, then uh, we've got these numbers that we're considering. Okay, so we're saying the value of the game is equal to three p minus three one minus p. Now, um, that's actually the value. Let's write it as this in this way: value of the game to Laura. Um, now, simplifying that, multiplying out, we get six p minus three. Okay, then we can say if Sam plays column two, that's these numbers here, then the value of game to Laura is basically equal to minus P plus zero times one minus P, which is just minus P. And then if Sam plays column three, we're now looking at these numbers here. The value of the game to Laura is equal to minus two P plus two times one minus P. And that simplifies to two minus four P. Okay, well now I'm just gonna set up the rugby post and we're now ready to set up the rugby post to try and find our optimum mix strategy. So let's just go and do that. Okay, so I've drawn the axes perhaps a little bit bigger than I needed to, but uh, it is important that the axes, it is a proper graph this. It needs to be, you need to take care with it. It's not a rough piece of work, so we're not doing, we're not doing things freehand. Use a ruler. Notice that this here, this along the horizontal is going from zero to one. So this this point here is zero and this point one is one along the horizontal axis. Okay, and then we've got the vertical which is the value of the game to Laura. Okay. Right, okay, so let's just um write in these three equations. They're basically uh, normal equations. So here's just got an intercept of minus three here. So let's just go and draw that. Okay, so 6p minus 3, if column plays 1, that's going to start off at minus 3. Okay, let's get a line going, working properly here. We need to do a ruler. So that's 6p minus 3. So that's going to actually, I've actually lost my scale a bit there. Probably need to take a bit of care with that. Um, because it's going up from 3 to minus 3. Um, yeah, let's just sort that out and move the other bit up a bit. Okay, so that's better. It's going through, it's going up from, from minus three to three. Okay, it looks a little bit like minus three there, but you can see, hopefully you can see that's just a dash. Okay, so that's three there. Okay, it does look a little bit like these are negative, so let's take the dash out. Okay. Right, that's better. Okay, so that's the first one. If if Sam plays column one, now right here if Sam plays column two, well that's starting off at zero. This one and finishing at minus one when p is minus one. Um, v is minus one. Uh, when p is one, v uh, v is minus one. So let's draw that on. We need that as red, really, don't we? Okay, that's better. And now, for if Sam plays column three, we've got the thing going from two down to minus two. 
So let's just do that from two if P is not. Okay, let's try again. Two if P is not to minus two P is equal to one. Slightly inaccurate there, but I think it'd be I'm not too happy with that. We really do need to make sure it's accurate. I'm struggling with the software at the moment. Let's just have another go. Okay, probably being a bit picky, but I think that's pretty good now. Now, um, do take care. If we, if you, if you're careless with this, I'd probably say I've probably been too uh, a little bit too much here. But if you start extending beyond the value where p is equal to one, or beyond, but you know where p is even negative, those valid values are not uh, valid. P can only be between be be between zero and one so that's all we should see and you will be penalized if we don't if we if you start so we extending the line beyond the range where it, uh, p is zero or one okay um and it needs to use a ruler um it just does need to we do need to take care here right so now let's just uh, what the whole purpose of this is to find the optimum strategy and what we do is we look for <coughs> the highest value, the highest value. Okay, it's almost like you can think this here is a bit of feasible region here. So it's the um, we want V to be the highest as lot. You can almost imagine that you've got a objective line thinking of D1 of p equals to v and we want that to extend as high as it can go okay and of course it would go the highest that line would go is here anything beyond that is outside the re feasible region so we want it to be as high as it can be we say sometimes referred to as the envelope this region here okay so that then means that um so it's this is the point here so this is the optimum mixed strategy. And of course, we can't, although we could just read off our values for P and for V, it's not going to be accurate enough. So we solve the equations to actually do it. So the optimum mixed strategy, let's make sure we've got the correct ones. Uh, the, the one that goes from minus 3 to 3 is this one here. So that's 6p minus 3. Do take care, it's surprising. In fact, um, the original version in the textbook had a mistake this way. All the hard work was done, but then the wrong equations were chosen. Um, so, And then this line here is this one here. So that 6p minus 3 is equal to minus p. Okay, so that gives us um, 7p equals to 3, p equals to 3 over 7. So we've both basically done it, but we must refer to the original problem. We want to find the optimum strategy and the value of gain to her. So let's find the optimum strategy. Well, by the principle of domination, we saw that Laura should never play one. So we must write that. Laura should never play play row one. But um, she should play row two. with probability uh, three sevenths of the time say or with p equal to three sevenths of the time so random she would choose randomly obviously it would defeat the object if she chose some kind of systematic pattern that the other player would know that would not make sense choosing randomly in a way that's such a way that the other player would not predict 
and uh, supply row three four sevenths of the time or with probability four over seven I haven't quite finished because it did ask for the value of the game here so we can input v into uh, p into any what any of our, our equation not this one of course because that didn't wasn't involved in the solution okay if we did that we'd get a value which is too high corresponding to where we are up here so no we so we put it into either of these two which of course the second one's much easier because uh, that's just minus p the value of the game to Laura is minus three over seven. Which you basically in the long run she's gonna lose minus three uh, over seven uh, for every, on average for every game that she plays in the long run. And that means of course it's kind of a disadvantageous this game too if you like. S plus S would in the long run win, gain three to seven uh, in the long run in uh, this, this in this game. Okay, right. So that was that question done. Here's another question. Um, June fourteen. Not a lot different though. This time it has asked for the stable solutions. Verify that there is no stable solution to this game. I did it in the last question when it wasn't required, just to because it's kind of key to the whole thing we're doing really. Um, but that doesn't mean we do it when we're not asked for. But here we are asked for, for uh, to do this. So um, verify that there is no stable solution to this game. Right, so again, we're going to look at our um, place A strategies and we're going to look for the row maxi min. So that if A play if if A plays one, the worst that A is going to do is minus three. And if A plays two, the worst that A is going to do is also minus three. Okay, so the maxi um, the maxi min equals minus three. Okay, for the, that's the row maxi min is equal to minus three. Okay, let's just actually clear some space for this so we distinguish it from the other question. Okay, so um, now let's look at uh, B's play safe strategies. Um, so we're looking for the column mini max. If B, if, um, if B plays one, the worst that they're going to do is two, because we're looking for the maximum here. They lose two as opposed to gaining three. Okay, if B plays two, the worst that they're going to do is also two. If B plays two, they lose two. Whereas if, 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 sorry, if A plays two, they lose two. If A plays one, in this case, they gain one. So the worst they're going to do is lose two. Um, now, if B plays three, the worst that they're going to do is one. And if B plays four, the worst that they're going to do is also equal to one. Okay, because that's the maximum in these. But the column mini max is now equal to one. So the row maxi min And we need to state this is not equal to the column mini max. Might also write to say just to ram the point home that one uh, minus three is not equal to one. 
kind of obvious. So therefore, there's no stable solution. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. Okay, right now, looking at this now, it's what's the best strategy for player A. Now, it's almost certain that we've got a domination uh, dominant situation again here, uh, where one of the uh, one of the columns is not needed. It's not definitely the case because, of course, we can still analyze it from a point of view because there's only two options for A. So we could we could um, it is possible that there isn't any domination, but I suspect there is. So I would look for domination here. Are there any columns that um, B? should never choose here well, um, and that's the thing now we're looking for, for column dom domination now so it's slightly more confusing so if we look at uh, if we look at this now we can look at uh, see that column four dominates column two Remember, it's going the other way around here. Minus three is less than minus one. And also one is less than two. And remember, from B's point of view, they want it to be uh, the least it can be. Okay, so they would always be better off play in row, uh, column four because the number in that that column is less so in other words if a were to play one they would be better off playing four because minus three is better than minus one to them basically but b would win three as opposed to winning one okay if a plays two one is better than two because again that means b loses one but that's actually better than b losing two so we want on this way around we want the numbers to be the smallest that they can be okay so in this case we can say this column two Need is dominated. That's the one that needs to be removed. If you don't, and uh, I remember actually marking this, if you don't, what you'll end up with is four lines in your diagram, and it still works out okay. Okay, so in this case, because they haven't specified that you need to use dominance, and because it's possible to do so, because you still have a p and a one minus p here. You've only got the two options for A. It's still possible to do it without recognising the dominance, and that was given full credit. Okay, but I'm going to actually use the dominance argument here. So we've only got our three equations. So again, we need to be setting up our problem. So we need to say, let A play row one with probability P. and row two with probability one minus p. Okay, so uh, we, that's quite an important uh, part of the process, setting it up, for, uh, setting it up the problem and defining it. Okay, so now uh, we're doing the same as before. If B plays one, then we have the value. The value of the game to A is equal to the value of the game is equal to two P minus three one minus P. Okay. Let's simplify this properly. Don't, it's surprising the number of people who make mistakes with this. 
that's 5p minus 3. If b plays column 3, then the vol value of the game to a will be equal to p minus 2, 1 minus p. So that will come to 3p minus 2, minus 2. And then if b plays If B plays 4, that's minus 3, 1, then the value of the game to A is equal to minus 3 P plus 1 times 1 minus P. So that will be equal to 1 minus 4 P. Okay, so that's our equation set up. Now let's just do our rugby post and uh, let's tidy this up and make a bit of room. So looking at the scale here, it's going to be, it's, we probably, probably need to go down to minus three. So One, two, three, minus three, and minus one, minus two, and minus three. And you can use the lines on your because you're not given grids or graph paper, but you can use the lines because essentially the distance from here to here along doesn't matter because it's uniform, it'll be the same, whatever. We're, we're trying to find the highest point, so we're not measuring the distance, but it needs to be accurate. So the scale along the horizontal doesn't matter, but it must be uniform everywhere, particularly on the vertical. You use the lines to guide you. Okay, so let's just go for the, the first one. If B plays one, that's going to start off at, uh, let's just change the colour of this. Uh, okay, that's going to start off at minus three. And finish at two there, when P is one. Um, now, the next one, three P is minus two. This one here. That one will start off at minus two and finish at P at one when P is equal to one. So that's looking similar like that. And then if B plays four, then it goes from one to minus 4p, so it's going down to minus 3, like that. And now we can really see the importance for some accuracy here, because they are very, very closely, tightly put together. And I think that probably was quite deliberate to, to make it so that people who are careless are going to be penalised here. Um, so it needs to be definitely needs to be accurate so we've got this is the point here that we're looking at okay so this is our point Ooh, there and that point it corresponds to the 1 minus 4p because this one is 1 minus 4p here and to 5p minus 3. So that makes it 9p equals to 4. 
So that means that A should, remember there was dominance going on here as well. A, oh, but it doesn't matter, actually the dominance doesn't matter in this case because it was, that's from B's point of view. So we don't have to, we're not in a situation where we have to interpret back in that way. Uh, so we just say A should play row 1 with probability or four ninths of the time. So with probability four over nine and should play row two probability five over nine okay and that is uh that is it that is it oh you might wonder why didn't i put the value of the game a lot of people did it wasn't asked here it didn't ask for the value of the game it says find the best strategy if you write it it's fine um but it's not required in this question a lot of people did because you're so used to doing it and it's certainly better to do that than it is to forget it if it was required as it was in the last question. Okay, so um, hopefully you're getting used to this idea of, uh, of what we're doing, setting up the problem. It is um, pretty, uh, pretty okay when you get used to it. One more question before uh, we do. We're back to a three, three by three. Um, the wording's slightly different here. And now uh, we've got a thing where they've asked us to transpose the matrix, okay? Um, so let's just do this example, and I think we've had a look at uh, enough of them. Uh, in this case, they've not asked us to so that there's no stable solution. We know that there's not, but hopefully you're getting the idea now that if there was a stable solution, then that's the end of the matter. That's, uh, we know what they're, they're going to do. They don't change their strategy. And the same thing happens every time and we've got quite a boring game. So in this case, we're going to decide uh, what the best strategy for B is. Um, but we've, um, we, we know that there must be some form of domination going on again here because it tells us, frankly, it tells us that there has been dominant, um, that there's dominance going on here so if we're looking at these columns um, let's look at column one and column two it does take a while to get used to this type of thing remember it's from b if we're looking from b's point of view b we want b to have the smallest number possible now 4 is less than 5, minus 2 is less than minus 1, and one is, uh, minus 1 is less than 1. So strategy 2 is better than strategy 1, whatever A does. Okay, so we're going to strike this one out. Of course, I'm striking it out here. In the exam, you're going to be writing it down because it won't be written in your answer book you're going to be writing down the matrix six three two uh, like this and a plays one and a plays two a plays three and b plays two and b plays three okay so we, we, you'd need to write it out like that okay um but um write down the reduced payoff for matrix uh, for payoff matrix for player b and then we're working out the strategy for player b now it would be possible if they hadn't asked for part b in the question it would be possible to do part c without it because you could start 
um, reversing the logic and calling this sometimes we'd use q here and one minus q if you like because we're looking at it from um, the other player's point of view and then you can just uh, put a minus sign in front or whatever but it's asked us to transpose anyway so um, and some people prefer to do it when you look at it from the other player's point of view prefer to transpose anyway and that so um, let's just do that um, rows become columns and columns become rows and we change the sign so this column here becomes the first row so that's minus four two and one and then this second column here becomes the second row when we change the signs so oh, there was a minus six there I'd be careless wouldn't it so that's six minus three minus two okay so that's our transpose matrix and now some people prefer to do this for part c anyway although it could be bypassed if part b was not asked for um, right so if we call this one p and one minus p so we need to set it up let p equal probability and we can it doesn't matter if you refer to the old column or the new row here but I'm going to say let p equal to probability that b plays new row 1 if I, okay new row 1 okay and 1 minus p probability B plays new row two. Okay, so let's have a look at the, uh, let's set up the equations. Um, if A, and we're gonna, we're, we're gonna work with the new matrix now. If A plays column one, then we can say that the value of the game to to b is equal to and we're looking at these rows here these numbers here minus 4 p plus 6 1 minus p so that makes that uh, 6 minus 10p. Then we can continue further. If A plays column 2, then the value of the gain to B is equal to, and now we're looking at these numbers here, 2p minus 3 1 minus p so that's coming to 5p minus 3 and then finally if a plays column 3 then the value of the game to be we're looking at these numbers here is p minus 2 1 minus p so that's 3p minus 2 so we're going to set up our rugby post thing again okay so for column 1 we're starting off at 6 and if p is 1 it's going down to minus 4 oh, let's change the color back to, to red here so we've not got too much green going on okay so then if b plays column two we've got 5p minus three so it's going to start off at minus three and if p uh, when p is one that goes up to two like here okay and then 
when if b play if a plays column three then that starts off at minus two here and goes to let's try again starts off at minus two what's going on okay try again starts off at minus two and goes to one another situation like the time before where you've got to be very accurate with your drawing it just shows you where i mean i think increasingly it's making sure that you take care with the drawing here i'm even a little bit concerned with this line here that I was a little bit far out. I think it would have, I would have reached a correct conclusion, but it does need to be accurate. So I'm going to redo this. Starts at minus three. Goes to two. It's a little, I'm not sure if it's much better, but I think it's good enough. So it wasn't too bad in the first place. We can see that this is not that one. Our optimum is our highest point, which is this point here. It's like this is our feasible region. We basically can't, as we're going up, we can think of this as our envelope here as we're going across. The highest point we'd come to is the point there. Okay, so that is the intersection of the line 6p minus 10 and the inter together with the inter uh, together with the line and i've got to be very careful here it's this line here okay because it's these two were very close together okay so it's that line there and that is the line um 3p minus 2. Okay. Okay, just got the scribble there to see it a little bit clearer. It is so close, isn't it? So to, do be careful. So we can say that 6p minus 10 is equal to oh, 6 minus 10p. I wrote that wrong. Was it? 6 minus 10p. 6 minus 10p is equal to 3p minus 2. So that gives me 13p is equal to 8. p equals to 8 over 13. So in this case, uh, expect if we go back to the question, find the best strategy for B, B, and now it does want the value of the game as well. So the best strategy for B, so B should, because remember there was domination here, should never play one, whether you call it row one or column one, doesn't matter here, or, and then, play uh, should play two with probability eight over thirteen and should play three with probability one minus that. One minus that, which is five over thirteen, and the value of the game. Right, we just need to su substitute p into either one of the equations we've used here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put it into this one. So three times eight over thirteen is twenty-four over thirteen minus two. 
um, which is equal to minus 2 over 13. Okay, so that's it. I think I cover. Uh, we've done three questions. Uh, we've seen the. Uh, we've talked about the stable solution theorem, um, the the um, row maximum has got to be equal to column minimax for there to be a stable solution. Most of the time in D two questions, there isn't a stable solution because if there were, it'd be a very short question because there's no. A mixed strategy involved is just one single row or column for each player and that's called the saddle point so um, you know more, more often than not when that you asked to apply that you asked to so that there's no stable solution then you go on uh, to find a mixed strategy the optimum mixed strategy for one player and we do this rugby player thing uh, to work that out and what else have we done? We've looked at domination, where one row or one column is, is, can be stricken off because it's never uh, an opt never going to be a good idea to play that one because it's dominated by another row or column. And also, we've also been in a situation where we've transposed the matrix, so we've looked from a, uh, the, the game from another point, a player's point of view. Now, it seems to cover most of the types of things you'll see in D2 Ed Excel. So hopefully that with the introduction will leave you reasonably confident and well prepared. We do need to go on to situations next time where there we have a three by three, say, and there is no... Um, there, there is no domination going on, so we, we have to stick with a three by three. And then we're into linear programming formulations and even possibly the simplex method to try and find an optimum strategy. But that's all to come. Um, but the, but the, the non-linear programming, non-simplex method or linear pro programming formulation part of game theory is covered by the, this video together, the introduction, which, uh, which we've already seen. Okay, that's it.